This is a heartbreaking story. It's an accident involved. There's selling of people involved. Yeah, it gets that crazy. Guys, strap your seatbelts in because this is the story of Mr. James and how he thinks he can buy himself a new wife. Never write anybody off. You never know who you might have to depend on in the near future. I got a twin sister called Sarah who was prettier than myself. We were the only children of our parents and we were fraternal. My parents both ran a joint business together and they did their best to provide for us. My sister Sarah's beauty was observed at a very young age, by all and sundry. Everyone, including my parents, began telling her how beautiful she was from time to time. This got into her head and filled her with so much pride that she started feeling like a superior human being. I was not jealous of my sister's beauty, but I was upset at the fact that she saw it as her right to always get away with things. In the school, she was arguably prettier than most girls, and it was no surprise when she became the prom queen of our set. My parents treated us equally until the time when Sarah was nominated to go represent my school. It was a beauty contest taking place in the state. My parents took her to the venue, and as we had expected, she outshone every girl at the present party. She was beautiful. She won the competition with ease, and my school took the prize. My parents were recognized and rewarded as the guardians of the latest princess in town. My sister had became a little bit of a local famous person. I've never seen my parents so overjoyed and proud in their lives. They began giving my sister special privileges, which included her taking her hands off anything that had to do with chores, at home or anywhere. I was practically turned to a housemaid at home. While my twin sister Sarah was worshipped like a goddess, I remember complaining once or twice, but all my parents did was tell me that my sister Sarah was bringing honor and prestige to the family, and the least I could do was help around with chores. I knew that I would get some really good beatings if I ever complained about it to my parents again. So I just let the matter be the way my parents wanted it to be. It hurt me. It really hurt me that my parents would treat me differently because I looked different from my sister. I did not make myself that way. I'm the product of both of them coming together. And so if anyone's to blame for my looks, it's them. After Sarah and I graduated from high school, we began seeking for admission in college. But my parents sent me to a public college run by the government, while my sister was taken to a privately owned college, where the quality of education was exceptional. It was at that point that I began resenting my parents a little bit. That's how it started, at least. How could they send me to a public college that basically had inadequate facilities? While well, my twin sister was moved to a better place. Well, there was really nothing I could do about it. Going to public school was still better than not going to school at all. My parents were tight-fisted and giving me money each time Anita rose in school. But when it got to my sister, they gave her before she asked. The wickedness was just becoming glaring day by day. The cost of maintaining my sister in school was high. Besides the fact that she was really wasteful, my parents were compelled during her second year in school to throw in a part of their business capital just so my sister could continue her schooling. And it was not even enough because their little princess was difficult to maintain. If only they knew what my twin sister, their princess, had turned into. My sister Sarah still commended for her beauty and the private college filled with rich men children. She joined the wrong company soon began living the wildlife, one would say. She needed to maintain the prestige which she had crafted, and that's why she constantly demanded money from my parents. My parents' business was on the brink of collapse, as it needed capital to stand on its own feet. It was at that time that they decided to take a loan from an acquaintance who knew about my family since my younger sister won the beauty pageant competition. The creditor gave them the amount they asked for. I honestly think it was a million dollars, and they promised to pay back in exactly one year's time after they must have started making some profits from business again. Well, things did not turn out well after the year was up. Things actually grew worse. In a way, I was happy because my parents had stopped sending me money for some time. 
But I knew that they still sent money to my twin sister, Sarah. So, the business could shut down for all I cared. It meant nothing to me. My parents' creditor came calling and knocking, and they did not have the money to pay back the loan that they owed. They started running from pillar to post in search of, oh, what to do. Well, my mom suggested selling their business to offset the loan and just end it even. But even if they did, the money realized from the sales would barely offset half the money they owed. My parents were almost gearing up to face the wrath of the law for breach of agreement when their creditor, Mr. James, came up with the proposition. He asked about my parents give him the hand of my twin sister. Yeah, Sarah and marriage in exchange for the loan collected to be waived off. Not only that, he being the creditor was going to give my parents for free double of the very amount when she promised to give them. My parents did not bother to consult my twin sister before saying yes, oh yes, yes, yes to Mr. James' proposal. The fact that they handled the issue that way meant that I was nothing more than a commodity to them. If they could give up my twin sister, whom they dub their princess of existence, without her consent or knowledge, who knew what they would do to me under the right circumstances and price? My twin sister was busy living her life on her terms in school, not knowing that she'd been used to settle a debt. What a shame. Arrangements were being made by my parents to bring my sister home before the news would be broken to her. I, for one, knew that my twin sister, Sarah, was never going to accept Mr. James, who was in his mid-forties. Oh, Mr. James had inherited his fortune from his parents at a very young age, and even though he had three children, he was yet to settle down with a woman... I'm pretty sure the only reason he wanted to get married to my sister because he was driven by lust and simply wanted to make her his sex object like most men who crossed my sister's path did. He was probably going to get tired of my sister a few weeks after getting married to her because, well, besides sex, there's nothing else my sister could offer. Although she was going to a private college, I was far better than her academically and morally too. My parents were busy waiting in anticipation for my twin sister's return, when the only thing they got was the news of her involvement. An accident nearly claimed her life. On getting to the crime scene, it was discovered that my twin sister was guilt. Drunk driving that killed someone's dog. My parents were grateful that it was a dog that was killed and not a human. Being otherwise, the problem would have been too much to deal with. There were questions to ask like, where my sister had gotten a car because the last time I checked, my parents had not given her one. And even if they wanted to do so, their present financial crisis would not let them do it. Finding answers to the questions were not really important then. What mattered most was saving the life of my twin sister, Sarah. She was unconscious for seven days in the hospital, and several corrective operations had to be carried out on her face as it's been badly damaged in the wreck. My sister woke up to find, well, that the thing which brought her privileges and gave her an edge over everyone else, her face was, sadly, permanently disfigured. She cried her life out, and my parents were meant to be just grateful that their daughter, who was supposed to be dead, had survived an accident of such magnitude. They equally wept. It just seemed unbelievable to me, the tears of my parents was based on the fact that their princess, who was supposed to be their escape route out of debt, was now useless to them lying in that hospital bed. They were not crying for her. They were crying for themselves. Call me wicked and you might be right because I left the house for the school the very day that my sister was discharged from the hospital. But if you knew about our history and how I've been relegated to the background of my parents, you'll understand the reasons behind my actions. I was not going to stay back home to nurse the princess of the house. Let my parents deal with that. The main aim of returning to college was to get a job to support myself in school. Because with the way things have gotten in family, it was stupid for me to expect my parents to keep sponsoring me. I got a job as a dishwasher in a restaurant around my school area, and it really helped me stay afloat. I was doing pretty well on my own, 
while my parents were busy running from pillars to posts seeking for a means to get out of their debt. After they've exhausted every option at their disposal with no hope in sight, they finally came up with the idea to use me. Yeah, I guess it's my turn to be their escape plan. I was surprised when my parents visited me in school for the first time in a long time, and they suddenly began apologizing for not treating me like the way they did my sister in the past. I was really not moved by their plea because I knew there was a motive behind them wanting to reconcile. Well, I wasn't wrong. After the whole apology spiel, they did not bother to bond with me. They just started off by telling me that the family was owed a serious debt that needed to be repaid. I wondered why they were telling me that, as it was clear that I did not have that kind of money they needed. I'm just a student. Either ways, I listened on to hear what they wanted me to do. The willingness was there to help out in whatever way that I could but I got irritated when I learned that they've collected a loan from an individual when their business was about to be crumbles because, well, they used part of its capital to sponsor my sister. It was always about my sister. My parents went to inform me that the individual whom they've collected the loan from demanded my twin sister Sarah to be given as a wife. Since they were not able to pay the money, but now that she's disfigured, he's probably not going to accept her. So they need me to get married to him instead. It was at the point that I flared up. This was the reason why they wanted a reconciliation. I was certain that if everything was going great for them, they would never apologize for their actions to me. After squandering their money on my sister, they now wanted me to pay the price. I told them that I was not going through with it. They have to look for some other means besides me to settle their debt. My response caused them to start apologizing all over again. They pleaded to the point that I would feel guilty if I said no to them. I accepted to carry on with the plan even though I was hurt that my parents only reached out to me because I could prove valuable to them. Preparations were made so I could meet with Mr. James, my parents' creditor. My mother had spent the days before talking to me and going to the saloon to get my hair done, and my nails fixed up like a proper lady. It was now my twin sister's turn to watch me get pampered by my parents. Well, I finally met with Mr. James, and it was a disaster. He was displeased with me and my family, and he did not bother hiding it. He was expecting my sister, quote, the beauty goddess, but my parents ended up presenting me. It wasn't what he signed up for. My parents explained to him that his promised bride was not more beautiful, as she had permanently ruined her face, and that's why they had to present me instead. But Mr. James wasn't having any of it. He outrightfully rejected me. Well, I was glad on the inside that I was going to end up as the wife of a man who was almost twice my age. He gave an ultimatum to my parents to bring his money within a week's time or they would answer to the police. My parents began selling their properties off like madness, but the money realized was nowhere close to what was required. They just had to wait and hope Mr. James did not keep to his promise of involving the cops. Oh, but he did. Exactly a week's time, as promised, the cops flooded our compound like they came for a shootout operation against armed robbers. They were heavily armed to the teeth. Together with my sister and some of the people in the area, I watched as my parents were handcuffed and bundled into the police van like criminals. Well, I guess you could say they technically were criminals. It was an embarrassment. All the pride and respect which my parents claimed my sister Sarah brought to the family name was covered in shame in an instant. Well, I didn't really care. The family could sink if it wanted to. My parents were locked up and neither I nor my sister ever paid them a visit. On my part, I was making plans to distance myself from them. They had enjoyed their glory days without me, so it only made sense that I did not share in their shame. On my sister's part, she no longer went out for fear of being ridiculed, and all Mr. James finally released my parents. But he took over their dying company, which he would later grow to success. 
My parents had to vacate the house they owned to rent a smaller place, while they both sought for jobs. I returned to college where I managed school and work, and I graduated six months later, but rather than go back home to my parents, I stayed back to become a full-time staff, and the place where I worked, although I kept on sending in job applications at various places where there were vacancies, I received a job offer at a different city. The pay wasn't that much, but it meant that I had the opportunity to start life where nobody knew about the glory to shame story of my family. I accepted the job, moved out of the city where my parents and sister lived without paying them a visit to let them know about anything happening in my life. I moved into the city and I was married within a year. I'm currently pregnant with my second child, and though I sometimes do think about my parents and my twin sister, I've still kept my distance from them. My sister refuses to go back to school to finish her degree because she can't bear the reaction of people who knew her before in the days of her beauty. Besides, even if she wanted to go back, my bankrupt parents lacked the need financial power to fund it. So... My 25-year-old twin sister just stayed back at home as a burden to my parents, who fed her from little which they earned. If my parents were able to see the future years back to know that the child which they were celebrating would honestly amount to nothing, while the other one that was neglected would be in a position to help them all, then they would have treated me differently, I bet. I'm determined to never make the same mistake with my children. I would love them equally. No matter what. Okay, guys, so this one was actually pretty heartbreaking. Hands down to me, the parents are way worse than Mr. James. Yeah, I understand Mr. James is basically trying to buy a wife, but what parents would agree to sell off their daughter just because they needed to pay off a debt? And when that didn't work, they tried to sell off their other daughter. And when that didn't work... It was time for OP of the story to separate herself from all of this nonsense. Let me know your thoughts about this. Who do you believe is the worst character of the story? Is it the evil sister who go ahead and gets in an accident? So in my opinion, I don't think it's her. Is it Mr. James, the guy who wants to buy a wife? Or is it the evil, no good, rotten parents? Drop your thoughts down below. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Consider subscribing to the channel. You can find all my links directly below. It has my other YouTube channels, my Instagram account, which has daily 60-second stories. And, well, that's all, guys. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. And remember, it's cool to be kind.